For me, Father. Yes, of course, Mrs. Carlin. Uh, now, what's the uh, what's the intention? It's for my late husband. It's his second anniversary. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll uh, say a requiem mass for him on Thursday morning, and I hope that he is in heaven by Thursday lunchtime. No, Father. <laughs> I want you to pray that he stays in the fires of purgatory for a good long time yet. <laughs> Here's the five shillings, Father. Thank you very much. Father Boyd. Yes. Father Dadlesworth's new assistant. Yes, that's right. Ah, uh -huh. such a sweet, darling little man. Uh, yes, you could say that. <laughs> I have a request of you, Father Boyd. Oh, please. Here is a rosary for you. Oh, thank you very much. And you know, I want you to bless it for me. Is that possible? For me? Oh, yes, of course, yes, no trouble at all. Uh... And now it is blessed. It is. Forever and ever. Well, unless you sell it, of course. Oh, now that it has received your special benediction, Father Boyd, I shall treasure it oh. till the day I die. Any priest would have done the same. But you did it, Father Boyd, not any priest. Now I have something else for you. No, Father. That's a little offering from myself to yourself to express my gratitude for the kindness you have just done me. Oh, that's very nice of you. Sorry to interrupt your prayers, Father. Well, that's all right, lad. We can wait. Just now, this uh, rather strange lady had to be this. The Lord be praised. Miss Davenport, our most treasured parishioner, is back. Back? Where from? Well, she spends half the year in Monte Carlo. Yes, well, she did seem well off. <laughs> Her father was a banker, yeah. and she inherited everything. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Here, have a sweet. No, thanks, Father. Go on, you can pay me back later. <laughs> All right, then, thanks. You know, she gave me this ten pounds for blessing her rosary. You're a lucky fellow. St. Jude's could do with that. We need over a thousand a year for the school fund. Well, can't I keep it? Yes, of course you can. Oh, good. If you insist. <laughs> do you imagine that, uh, that I'd keep it if the lady had given it to me? No, Father. I would indeed. <laughs> then I'm the chief shepherd here. And you're only my lamblin of a curate. Go on, you better keep it this time, boy. Did anyone ever tell you you're a sweet, darling little man? <laughs> if the rich insist on throwing the money about like snuff at a wake, then it's essential that we have people of integrity around to pick it up. Like you and me. Well, I can only speak for myself. <laughs> now, I want you to solemnly promise me that you'll be a good curate and humour this lady in every way. Oh, you can count on me, Father. <laughs> you remember, dear brethren, how... Martha and Mary entertained our Lord in their house in Bethany. Martha was bustling around, getting the meal ready. But Mary kept gaping at her Lord and Master, lovingly and adoringly. <laughs> uh, lovingly and adoringly. Martha said to Jesus... <laughs> Martha said, Lord, don't you mind that my sister Mary isn't helping me? Jesus said, Martha, Martha. Oh, 
Thank you, Mr. Parker. <laughs> Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are troubled by many things, but only one thing is necessary. Mary has taken the best part, which shall not be taken from her. <laughs> <laughs> You do look miserable. Is Daddy Short Legs getting you down? <laughs> Father D? No. Care to tell a prying female about it? It's a woman. Some fatal lady pestering you. I'm not sure if she fancies me or not. Oh, you wait till I get my claws in the young hussy. Well, she's not exactly young either. Perhaps she just wants to mother me. Well, they're the worst, the crabby sort. See, in the seminary, you were protected against the wiles of wicked women, but outside your fair game. You sound just like Father D. He had the same problem, you know. Tell me more. Well, I'm speaking of 20 years ago. Quite debonair he was in those days, with a waistline and a lock or two of hair. Oh, he must have looked ravishing. <laughs> Back to your kitchen, Robert. <laughs> Clark Gable that was. <laughs> What's all that about? Oh, we were just speaking about women, Father. Oh, they're like brooms, all of them. Very useful, but they can't stand up on their own. <laughs> Here, don't look through those, will you? Yes, women can be a bit of a problem. Oh, think nothing of it, lad. It's part of the job. Is it? Oh, yes, indeed. You'd never believe it, you know, but uh, when I was young and handsome, the women used to cluster around me like migrating birds. Really? What do you mean, really? <laughs> oh, I mean, uh, that must have been a great trial. No, 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 no. No, you see, I was wise enough to know that I could never love anybody else but myself. Fine. <laughs> Here, I'll be quite honest with you. There was one woman who couldn't take her eyes off me. Short-sighted. Very. Mm. <laughs> she was always wanting to grab a, a button off me cassock to use as a relic, you know. <laughs> Wait now. One winter. Mm. She spent all night outside the presbytery, <laughs> waiting to get a glimpse of me. Yeah? How did it all end? Oh, well, shortly after that, she was committed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I nearly forgot. Hmm? Who on earth has been delivering crates of champagne at the side door for you? Who is it? Oh, Mr. Mr. Davenport, yes, yes, yes. Yes, indeed he is. I, I put him on for you. It's for yourself, Father Neil. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, Father. I'm terribly busy at the moment. You're about as busy as Piper's little finger here. <laughs> Father Boyd? Father Boyd, my darling canary is indisposed. It's only a sick canary. Only? <sighs> Poor little blighter. <laughs> Have you tried calling in a vet, Mr. Davenport? A Harley Street specialist is with him now, but he admits to being out of his depth. Oh, well, shall I give you Dr. Daly's number? Are you still there, Father Boyd? Yes, I, I was just wondering what I could possibly do to help. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> are you a shilling short in the head or something? What have you got there for a heart? A cooking apple? You tell the good lady that you're just about to stir your stumps and get round there in double quick time. Sorry. <laughs> um, would you like me to uh, come round and see him, Miss Davenport? Oh, I would be eternally grateful, Father Boyd. I shall send the rolls. Oh, well, the Mercedes, then. Oh, no, 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 no. I have my own means of transport. I'll be along in double quick time. Now, listen, me street corner boy, me dark haired loafer. I want you to drop this bossy trades union do nothing attitude <laughs> and get round there and bless that poor canary. The church doesn't provide a blessing for a canary. And for God's sake, use the blessing for an aeroplane. <laughs> Curates. Not like they were in my day. Thank God. Oh, look there. Father Boyd, come to see the canary. <laughs> Father Boyd, is it really you? I thought you were expecting me. Uh, come. of such exquisite sensitivity. Hmm. Sit down. Comfortable? 
Thank you. I have had my little companion for quite six months now. And for the first time, he positively refuses to sing for me. Oh, uh, when did it... Uh... He? He's a boy, Father Boyd, as you can see. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Um, when did he last sing? Timmy is his name. Timmy. <laughs> Ten. Since then, Bonzo, my bloodhound, Sleeky and I have kept vigil in turns by his cage. You must be very fond of animals, Miss Davenport. That is so. But some of my best friends are people. <laughs> uh, and now, uh, the uh, blessing, uh, the my stole, and my book. And, um, holy water. Oh, yes, holy water. Yes. I've, uh, made a little hole in the cork there. Turns into a sprinkler. How intriguing you are. <laughs> in the name of Almighty God. Father, what is his name? Well, you just told me his name was Timmy. I'm not going to baptise him. Oh, no. Father Dudleswell has baptised him already. No. What is Timmy's name in Latin? Oh, Timotheus. Oh. Well, in your priestly blessing, would you please call him Timotheus? <laughs> Timotheus, in the name of Almighty God, I bless you and pray that through your long and arduous journeys through the heavens by day and by night, you take off safely, travel tranquilly, <laughs> and land securely at your destination. Yeah. Somehow it makes Timmy sound so heroic. Does it? Especially as he never leaves his cage. <laughs> and now, Timotheus, I bless you in the name of the Father. Oh, so soft. where the whole of Harley Street failed. A miracle. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. I shall write to your bishop about this. Oh, no, please don't do that. I don't think he'd fully understand. Oh. Oh, very well. But I must insist that when next I have an audience with the Holy Father, I shall tell him personally that the animal loving St. Francis of Assisi has been surpassed by Father Boy. Of St. Davenport gave a tinkle. She just wanted to thank you for saving her canary. What's come over you, boy? You say you want to help run the parish and you come in here as savage as a dog. I did not sign on as a priest to be thrown into the arms of a rich, potty old lady. Will you not listen to me, Father Neil? Seeing as I'm old enough to be your uncle. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> if an old age pensioner had invited you to her flat, to bless a canary. Would you have obliged, sir? I suppose so. Right. Well, remember, will you, that to a priest, the rich are no different than the poor, except they got a lot more money. <laughs> I apologize, Father. Put your name on the back of this for me, will you? All right. Five pounds. St. Paul bids us be fools for Christ's sake. <laughs> but not blithering idiots. And is that woman still after you? After me, before me, and on all sides of me. 
You know, this morning she gave me ten pounds for burying her pet tortoise that got run over. Oh. What did Father D say to that? Well, he said that after my success with the canary, it's a good thing for my reputation as a healer that the tortoise was killed beyond repair. <laughs> Hello. I'll see if he's in. Father Neil, is that fake lady called Miss Davenport? Oh, yes. Give it to me. Miss Davenport? Eight o'clock this evening. Yes, all right, I'll be there. Bye. Well, why didn't you let me gun her down? She's my responsibility, Mrs P. I'll not let her make a mockery of the priesthood any more. Tonight I'll sort her out. Once and for all. <laughs> well, yet a hearty supper, no mistake. I need it. Four sausages and mash, two plates of pudding, and three cups of tea. <laughs> and half a bottle of champagne. Well, I've got a very important assignment tonight. Well, I wish you well. Is there anything I can do to help? Yes. Pour me another cup of tea. <laughs> Uh, Miss Davenport, uh, there's something I must say to you. Oh. Well, if you're expecting guests, I'll, um... Only you. Me? You do have a good appetite. Yes, usually, Miss Davenport. Could you help me with my chair, Father Boyd? Oh, sorry, yes. Thank you. Is there anyone who doesn't, Miss Davenport? <laughs> Are you enjoying your oysters? Very much. Good. <laughs> then perhaps you would care to pour for the next course. Delighted, Miss Davenport. <clears throat> um, have you any um, preferences, Miss Davenport? As you can see from the menu, always Chateau Aubryon, 1918, on these occasions. Oh, yes, I see. No, that is the au périgay, the sauterne for the dessert, Father Boyd. Oh, I was um, <clears throat> just admiring this rather splendid old label. Mm. <laughs> That's the water glass. So it is. <laughs> First name, Father Boy? Yes, Miss Davenport. May I be let in on your little secret? Neil. Neil. Yes. Neil. That's right. It suits you. It is you. Yes, Miss Davenport, it is me. <laughs> I shall call my next tortoise, Neil. Very kind. <laughs> if it's a boy, of course. Yes. <laughs> May I, dare I, call you Neil? Father Dulleswell wouldn't like that. Charles? Charles? No. Oh. <laughs> he wouldn't object to anything I do. It seems not. I'm Daisy. Oh, Daisy. Really, Miss Davenport? You see, dear Neil, I feel we have to be on first name terms if I am to tell you... Yes? ...the story of my love. Miss Davenport! Daisy! Daisy! <laughs> You're a Catholic. And I'm a priest vowed never to marry. But it is because you are a priest, Neil, that I feel I can tell you without inhibitions of my love for Pierre. Pierre? Pierre. Monsieur le Comte. My first, my only love. You're not too shocked. A little shaken. Oh. I was a mere 17 when first I met my Pierre, 
at the casino in Monte Carlo. Ah, it's a long, sad tale. Sad and long. Pierre was, alas, a married man. With a beautiful but boring wife, an ancient chateau on the Loire, and half a dozen children. Rarely does it happen that the perfect wine comes into being. Such a marvellous blending of soil and rain and sunlight is required. Celestial chemistry, Neil. Only such unique conditions can produce a wine like this. Genius like Bach or my Pierre. You understand? Perfectly. <laughs> Eat up, please. The steak was delicious. So too is that apricot tart. This is the meal that Pierre and I chose to eat the night we said goodbye. Mm. Are you feeling all right, Father Neil? I'm full, Miss Davenport. <laughs> My heart is overflowing. <laughs> so calm. <clears throat> it was passionate, but pure, Neil. Only one such as you, committed to the single life, could possibly understand my heartache as we said goodbye. And the long loneliness since. I do understand, Miss Davenport. Well, it's getting late. Would you excuse me? Oh, say no more. I shall ask Marie to get your hat and the rest of your equipment. Oh, is it yourself? Well, how do you feel now? Much relieved. <laughs> it's true what they say, you know. Best things in life are free. <laughs> Here, drink that up. She phoned then. Miss Davenport? Hmm. No. Well, how did you know I needed milk and magnesia? <laughs> I had my memento of ten years ago. <laughs> the menu. Charles. Exactly. Every new priest for miles around has to do it the once. Tonight was your turn. How could you possibly know it was tonight? Because it's the anniversary. Ah. Father, do we have to make fools of ourselves for money? Ah, no. I knew you'd think I'd done it for money. But the fact is that I did it out of priestly respect for Daisy. Oh, yes. She got rid of a fancy Frenchman, you know, so that she wouldn't break up his marriage. Daisy acted like a devout Catholic, and she deserves the clergy's full support. Oh. You see, lad, the rich especially are worthy of a priest's consideration. They can't take refuge in the ultimate human illusion that money is the answer to all life's problems. Oh, I'm sorry, Father, really I am. But one thing, mm. if you knew what was in store for me tonight, why did you let me eat all that stodge for supper? Well, I, tried... <laughs> <laughs> I tried to warn you, but <laughs> you got so fractious about the mere blessing of a canary, I thought you'd opt out of it altogether. Well, I might have <laughs> Anyway. As you salute back, Mrs. Spring thought you might be a bit peckish. So she left you this. A hunk of apple pie. <laughs> Curates these days. They're no stomach for the joke. 